welcome to the video and please like and subscribe if you like it and you want more content um, today I'm going to show you the layout of the engine the configuration so you probably know but if you don't whenever any literature is relevant to the engine they always quote the right and left hand side of the engine from sitting in the car so you'll be behind the engine that is the right hand side that is the left hand side. Any literature will refer to right and left as that, not standing in the front. So the lineup of the pistons you've got that's number one cylinder, number two cylinder, number three cylinder, number four cylinder, number five cylinder, number six cylinder. Now we'll come around the front. This is your water pump, three bolts. Hold it on, secure it to the block. Okay, that's your water pump. Very easy to get off even when it's in the car. This is your oil pump. And if you take this off, I'll show you here. This has got the later version of the oil pump on, but this, the earlier oil pumps didn't have this strengthening piece here. And these were known to break off so you'd have a hole in the top of your oil pump so where this timing uh, cam belt tensioner fitted it used to snap across there why it snapped I, I don't know maybe the belt was too tight um, I've no idea why it, why it snapped because some snap and some don't so um, but anyway they strengthened it because they found that that was a problem so that is your oil pump and to get your oil pump obviously your front sprocket has to come off these are your idler pulleys for your timing belt and now I'll turn the engine over. Okay, I'm going to undo all the sump bolts, which are all, all the way around, to take the sump, or oil pan if you like to call it. Um, I'll do that. I'll do that off camera, otherwise you'll just be watching me for five minutes taking them all off. These bolts are 8mm by the way, and there's plenty of them. around the sump are all 8mm and there's 21 of them. So I've taken all those or loosened them all off, taken them out and by the way this is the the part where we find out where these engines fail because the cylinder heads are as I said before in another video they're fairly bulletproof. You don't get a lot going wrong with them. Obviously you can get manufacturing problems or assembly problems um, mistakes that have been made that can happen to any engine um, but we'll take this off and the ladder rack as well careful when you lift it off what have we got in here yes bits of metal Yeah, it's quite a few bits of metal. Something's worn away. I wouldn't mind betting that's a main bearing. Probably spun. Uh, we'll take that off. On that side. That's what's with it. Now we'll take we'll take the actually this is your dipstick, we'll take that out. Right. 
Now this is what they call your ladder rack. This part here, it's just a, it fits in between your cylinder block and your oil pan. And it basically, it strengthens and stabilizes the cylinder block, which I'll explain when I get this off the reason this is needed. Oh look, oh look at that. Lots of metal filings there, look. They, they always fail on this bottom end and in here. That's metal filings everywhere. The engine still turns over. But, uh, there's tons of it. Everywhere. Okay, we've got the 8mm bolts at the back. And then we've got 10mm bolts. We've got some 8mm in the front. And then 10mm again on the sides. So I'll take those off, off camera. And then we'll have a look in and see what's happened inside. All right, these are the last bolts. I'm just loosening off completely. And then we can take the ladder rack off. This really is the most important bit to look at and try and diagnose out of the whole engine because these catastrophically fail. There's no ifs or buts. They just, they, they show no signs, and then that's it, you've got the men's gone, finished. Forget it. I've taken three apart. This is, again, a mixture of 10mm bolts along here, then you've got, uh, then you've got some 8mm bolts along the front, and 8mm bolts along the back. Just drop the dips, dipstick tube out. Oil dipstick, so that's out of the way. That's on a, an O ring as well. Put that down. Now let's see. Okay. Yep, that seems to be. There we go. That's the ladder rack off. Oh, now. So. They are cross bolted, bolts in here, into the main caps to give it more rigidity. Right, this is the ladder rack to block gasket. Take that off. Uh, then I've undone all the bolts on the drive plate. So I'm going to take that off. They're torque bolts, by the way. I've loosened off the front pulley because I want to take the oil pump off. Oh, where's that gone? Okay, that's the front pulley off. I've loosened all the bolts off on the oil pump, so they're all out. They're 8mm bolts by the way again. I seem to like a lot of 8mm bolts on this engine. They're all round the outside, the bolts. Get the ones tucked in under there. Okay, 
Okay, these you've got to take off by the way. Uh, let me sock it there half inch. Oh, you only got to take one arm off, but I'll... they're the idler wheels. Put it to the uh, timing belt. That's what take them off all together. Okay, and they all pump housing should come off. Yeah, so those those are your bolt holes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that takes your pump off. Lovely and clean. Cross bolts, remember the, the cross bolt. Take those out because they bolt into the sides of the caps. There's obviously four, four caps, so there's four cross bolts on each side. Okay, that's the eight cross bolts taken out. Now I'm going to remove the main cap bolts and the big end bearing bolts off camera. Okay, that's all the main cap bolts loosened off and the big end bearing bolts loosened off. So um, I can take the first main cap off. Well, first of all, I'll take the big end bolts off, take the big end caps. Just have a look, see how they, they're worn. Okay, it's got a bit of wear on there. The journal looks okay. All right, we'll put that down. Take the second one out. The shells haven't haven't spun anyway. Yeah, that's got wear on it. That looks like that's burnt a bit. Had a pick up on that one. That's on the there. Take the third one out. Oops, drop the bolt. Yeah, that's had quite a pick up on that and a wear. That's worn. The fourth one out. Yeah, that's had wear. Not catastrophic, but it's wear. Not good. I'm going to take this one out. Turn that over a bit. Not. Okay. Yes, that's had wear as well. As again, it's not catastrophic, but it's it's not good. That's the same. Not as bad, but it's the same. It's had wear. I can tell with the journals if I mic them up afterwards. That's it. If they've got any ovality or where, and as long as those measurements were in tolerance, then uh, they would be okay to go again. But if they're not within tolerance, then it would have to be reground. Right, I'll just take the mains off now. Okay. It's had wear, not catastrophic again, but it has had wear and it has a, it's got a burn there. And these are numbered by the way, you've got one, two, three, 
and four, so they're numbered, so you can't go far wrong. That's at the front of the engine, number one, number two, number three, number four. They're stamped on there. And also they have, it's like an arrowhead on here that faces forwards, so you know which way round they go. Okay, that's that one. That's that wear on it, I can see that. Yeah, that's that wear. Let's get these bolts down there. Okay, let's take the second one off. Now these cranks do snap. It's quite rare on the Jaguar, but on the Land Rover it, um, it's not so rare. But they, they can go here, crank, break there, there, here, wherever. Alright, let's take this one off. Oops, well, straight away. Whoa. Straight away you can see the burn marks on that. So these shells have, well they have, yes I can see. This shell should be on the bottom, should be placed on the block where the uh, oil feed is. And this is on the top and that shell is very worn. And it's also, it's worn the cap as well, the cap's worn. So I'd imagine the base of the, the, the block is worn as well. That's terrible. That's got red hot that. So what's happened is that's just spun. It's just stayed on the bearing and spun round. It should stay in the cap and it's just spun. And it's very burnt that side. So that is definitely the problem. That is terrible. That, that is, it's actually worn there. It's worn a lip where it's been sliding round. Very, very bad. All right, that's the second one. The third one. The third one is basically, yes, oops, the third one is the same. Burn marks, burn marks, and the shell. Yeah, the shell is grooved, so it's on, on the outside, so that's been spinning as well. And you can see it there, it's worn out on, this, on the inside surface as well as on the outside surface. And that's, that's had wear as well on it. Let's have a look at this one. No, this one's not too bad. This is about the same condition as the front. Yes, yeah, it's about the same condition as the front. It's not good, but it's not as bad as the two centre ones. Right, just push these off. Oh, I'll take these out. I'll take the crankshaft out. Right. Those journals, I would say, are, I'd say that crank's pretty bad. Right. As you can see, the bottom shelves have the oil hole in it, the oil feed hole and the groove to feed the crankshaft. And on this one, it's completely the reverse. It hasn't got a hole in there, so that's been getting basically no oil on. It's been getting slight. I mean, as it twists, as it spins, it's obviously going to pa pass that hole with the other bearing. It's going to pass that hole and get oil at some stage, although it's been slight. That is the shell that should be on the bottom, which is that one. And that one should be on the top. You can see how loose in there it is. It just, they're, they're only held in basically by crush pressure, which is the cap with the top shell it's bolted on there at a certain torque and it crushes that down. They're slightly bigger obviously than the apertures in there. And it's crushed down and holds that in place. That's the idea of it anyway. Um, in the old days, or in, in other engines probably, they used to have a lug pressed out of that shell that used to fit into a channel that was grooved out of the block. So that would place it straight in. It was, I think, first designed as a locating 
lug so that you couldn't put that shell in wrong. You'd put it in and it would fit into that lug. But I also think as a side effect that that would probably have held that shell in, in, in place. Not It wasn't designed to do that, but it probably would have helped to hold it in place to stop the shell spinning. Because this, without these lugs on it, do seem to, a lot of engines without these lugs, do seem to suffer with spinning shells. Whether that's true or not, I, I don't know. That's just my opinion. I think that would certainly help. But anyway, that's worn in there. That's worn. And that's worn. So, my opinion, I'd, I wouldn't go again with this engine. I, I wouldn't bother. You'd need it in, in line board, oversized shells, whatever. Maybe cold welded. Um, I just wouldn't risk it. To me, this uh, block is, has had it. Um, the shells in the comrades don't seem too bad. But again, um, th to me, that's just not worth doing. I wouldn't, I wouldn't waste my time with it. Now, inside this engine, you've got jets, cooling, uh, cooling jets here. You see that? You've got cooling jets in each cylinder, so they spur oil into the bottom of the piston to keep the piston cool and also to oil the small end. So you see the top of the piston or the bottom of the piston, you can see the actual jet where it will spray the oil onto the small end or gudgeon pin and also it would spray into the piston to keep the pistons cooler. Um, have a look what causes it okay you can see if I put pressure on that shell it's quite tight quite tight to push down in this one where it's been spinning it's easy it's, it's just worn out and also the reason these engines suffer catastrophic damage on the bottom end is because you don't really get any warning your oil pressure light doesn't come on. When these shells spin, when they move, I don't think they spin straight away. I think they're probably nudged around, probably a, a little bit at a time. Over, over a period of time, they're probably like nudged. So it slightly starts covering that hole up, but it's still getting oil in there. And it's only when it gets to the point where it blocks that hole completely that no oil comes in. So you don't get that film of oil between your crankshaft journal and the shell therefore then it will start spinning but with that hole being covered up you wouldn't lose any oil pressure so therefore your oil light wouldn't come on because it's blocking the oil pressure hole if it was open if this shell fell out and it was open and there was no resistance to the oil coming through there the feed then you would your oil pressure would drop but the way this goes it doesn't drop so therefore you don't really get any warning all of a sudden you're driving along cars running fine then all of a sudden it's banging away like a good one. Uh, as to the cause of it, it's hard to say. It, it, it could be a design fault, but there again, why don't all the engines do it? Because there's a, there are a lot more of these engines in cars driving around now that have done a lot more mileage that are perfectly okay. So if it was a design fault, you would think that would affect every engine. Is it a manufacturing problem? Again, that I don't know. I don't know if they're made in different factories or whatever. That I, I can't really comment on. Um, it could be an oil problem. It could be the wrong grade of oil. Maybe Jaguars have said, but there again, it doesn't affect every engine. So that kind of rules that out. Um, it's also, this engine, when it first came out, there were no uh, exhaust systems like the DPF that regenerated itself. Now Jaguar introduced those in 2000 and late 2006, 2007. So when these engines came out in the Jaguars, I mean it's a Ford engine, Ford PSA engine design. But these Jaguars were put in, uh, these engines were put in Jaguars and, and Land Rovers in 2004. So that was pre-regeneration. 
Now those engines, you still get plenty of those S-types, diesel S-types floating around, and they've done high mileage, and their diesel engines are perfectly good. So whether the regeneration process affects it or not, I don't know, because I do know that the injection timing is altered uh, to heat up the DPF, help heat up the DP DPF to burn off the carbon when it's going along, going along a motorway. And it is possible diesel fuel gets down into the engine oil and dilutes the engine oil. Um, there have been reports where people say, uh, my engine uh, oil level has, has gone up. I mean, generally it would go down. But they say it's gone up, which, which could be the diesel oil. Well, it, it, the only explanation is the diesel fuel getting into the engine oil and therefore diluting the engine oil and causing this problem. It, it could be that. Um, it could be the... I, I don't know. I, I mean, it could be a number of things that's actually causing it. I wouldn't like to say specifically 100% what it is. I don't honestly don't know. But um, as I say, it, it doesn't happen to every engine. There's plenty of these engines flying around. So please don't think that it's they're all like it. On that note, I'll end the video. And uh, thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.